my week got a lot worse today when I found out that uh, Kentaro Miura passed away. Yeah, who is the creator of Berserk? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's that's tough. We have un- unfortunately, I guess we we've recorded all of our reactions of Berserk yeah. before this news hit. So hell, maybe we even throw some like this conversation at the end of that just to acknowledge the man's work. Sure. And his passing. But uh, I, it, 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 it's especially, <laughs> it's hitting me especially hard because we've finished Berserk. Mm-hmm. We're currently running a poll for what's going to be replacing Berserk. But as soon as we got done, I was like, Rick, I need the manga, <laughs> you know? So I started, I've read all of volume one, like in two or three hours. All of the collected volume. The collected volume. So it's like thick, yeah. this thick, you know? I read all of that, and then I was like gushing to Rick about certain things, and I'm like, they they didn't put this character in, Rick, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and the art is just gorgeous, and like, just I don't know. Uh, I love I love the anime that we watched, but I don't know. Seeing the the sh- the lines on the paper, every scene, every like, yeah. you know, you can tell this guy put too much detail into some stuff. Like, you know, I know he had a reputation for. Sometimes it takes a while to get stuff done, you know. But just wa- just reading the first volume or the omnibus, I'm like, well, yeah. When you want it to look this good, it's gonna take a while. And he he was involved in the '97 anime. It's the only animation that he's been involved in. Yeah, gotcha. But yeah, there's there's nothing gonna hold a candle to the manga. Yeah, and the manga is fantastic. And like, with what I've seen so far, like. Because you said it a couple of times, but I don't know if I had believed you because that show could get incredibly dark. But, wow, the show really held back in this moment Yeah, <laughs> compared to the manga. So I'm I'm very, very excited to keep reading, but it, it is going to be uh, a sad day when we catch up to, because he did not finish the story. Yeah, the this, this story is not finished, right? Yeah. No. How, uh, how long you said he's been working on it? Since, uh, like, so the it 80s? first got serialized in 89. 89? Is when it first <clears throat> went into publication he's been working on it ever since and he was young how old was he 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 died at 54 he died at 54 yeah Yeah. so he died quite young of a acute aortic dissection Mm. i think it's called okay not really sure what that is Mm. but yeah i heard the news this morning and like i've been busy all day so i'm not looking forward to my first like quiet moment yeah i get you um because right now it's just i i can't believe it yeah it's crazy to think about like Berserk, it's been so influential. Obviously, like anything that's been dark fantasy, especially that's come out of Japan since '89, yeah. has been influenced by Berserk in some way or another. Um, most obviously, any character you see with a giant sword, you know that is coming from Berserk. But a lot of the themes and the character and the tone and stuff, uh, yeah, from everything from like you know Castlevania to Dark Souls to Demon Slayer. I've I've been especially surprised about just how many creatives have come out uh, talking about what Berserk did to them. Like even um, I saw this one post: uh, servers and final the Final Fantasy Online have all like they they've come out with their giant swords to honor them. You know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, it, it it it's always one of those things where like selfishly, at least for me, I'm gonna be like, well, I need to know what he thought how he was going to end this you know sure but also like just some incredible work that inspired so many other people i i had said this when we were watching the first time like because rick you had said that you watched the, the anime and then you immediately watched it again and like all like in a day or two right i watched it four times in three days gotcha four times in three days so you like watching it once a week uh for how what 27 weeks that we did I always felt like I like this. This is intriguing, but I want like what happens next. And when sometimes when you do that, you don't appreciate foreshadowing as much, or you know exactly what's being said about a character because there's a mystery to this character. Sure. Once you know about more about the character, there's a lot more meat on the bones. You know. Sure. So, so when for you go me, back, you notice yeah. like, oh, this is what they were hinting at that yeah. I didn't catch before. And so it's it's especially interesting for me because I'm not going through the, the anime again, but I'm going through the manga. But I'm coming with all this baggage of like this character. This I have, you know, I have feel this way, you know. And the manga, like, it's like it it mocks me because <laughs> it's there and it's more. Yeah, you know, you should have felt more 
So now I feel even crazier the second time going through it. Mm. So it's a really interesting experience. But Rick, having followed it for a while now, like, what do you like? Do you hope that anyone tries to finish the the story of Berserk, or do you hope they just kind of leave it alone now? Or no, I mean the thing about Berserk is like it was all him. Sure. So he wrote it, he drew it. Like I I, I can't imagine. Like, I, I would maybe want his notes or sketches, like, translated and to see those. But yeah. I don't think I would want anyone else to take up the mantle. Like, um, it's it's kind of fitting in some ways that the story of Berserk never ends. Yeah. And, like, there's just this continuous struggle. Sure. Um, but I am curious to know what he had in his ideas. But I just can't imagine anyone sure. else doing Or, like, it. how close was he to what yeah. he was anticipating to be the end? Or did he have an end in mind? Or Yeah, like... Because sometimes they have ends in minds, and it's like, well, that's where we're going to go. But let's tell some more stories in between. Or... I think I read an article. I think it was written, like, two years ago. And it, he said, like, he thought he was going to finish it in six years. Gotcha. And that was how long ago? I think it was two years ago. Two years ago. But I'm not entirely sure. It's unfortunate that not every genius comes with like, like for example, J.R.R. Tolkien had Christopher Tolkien, yeah, to like, not only finish what he started, but do it with like, you know, this is literally his father's legacy. So sure. he treated it very, very, very seriously. Yeah, you know, and it's like Tolkien speaking to us from the grave. You know, yeah, like I, well, I it would be. It would be a, a dream if someone could do that for this man's work. This is kind of like what I, I, I've heard people worried about it for, like, Song of Ice and Fire, right? Because, like, uh, I forget how old uh, George R. R. Martin is. And they're like, you know, it's been a while between the books and stuff like that, mm -hmm. too. Is like, well, how many more books is he going to do? Is he going to get it done before, like, like how long is it going to take yeah. him and stuff? And I know some people have been – they've talked about it for that show. But, you know, especially at, like, 54, you said? Like, 54, 54. relatively now is yeah. young, and, you and, know? And like, sudden. From what I understand, like it wasn't like it was creeping up or anything. No. I saw someone say like, and they, he, they he, think John Ritter passed from the same thing, and mm -hmm. I know that one was a very unexpected one he, too. Right? Uh, he, he did pass away on May sixth. It's just being public yeah. now, mm -hmm. so it, it's been a little while. But we're just finding out about it these last couple days. Gotcha. Oh yeah, and it's crazy because like, I don't know about manga, but I don't figure this too often where it's like the the same person. Uh, like comic wise is doing the story and the art and the the writing, you know, like yeah. they're, they're doing it's all of it. It's pretty. Uh, Lots that, of times that's generally how they do it in, in Japan. In America, it's usually the writer. Lots of times you have two and then people, you have right? An artist, yeah. Like uh, yeah. you know, turtles. Then you have an inker, you know, yeah. and a colorist. Like they have the, here's the person who's doing the artwork of it. Here's yeah. the person who's doing like the the dialogue and the story and stuff. And they kind of work together. Depending on how so. successful and big you are, like you know, Dragon Ball Super, Akira Toriyama is not drawn anymore. You know. Sure. But he'll do, like, character design and stuff, but he's not doing every panel. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm, I've been debating if I wanted to read through the, the manga just because, like, the way it ended, I just, at the very least, I feel like from the anime, I just wanted to kind of see, like, what happened there and yeah. maybe kind of, like, is there some kind of wrapping of, like, an arc that I can have where I have, like, more conclusion than what I felt like I got from Berserk because – yeah. That anime didn't go as far I, as I, I get what you mean. You know? And I, I think Rick said something like this. And, you know, we don't want to spoil anything about our actual reaction or anything sure. like that. But having read the manga, or, or like, to the point where I'm at right now, it's almost as if, like, the anime stopped at the worst and best spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, I mean, like, Berserk for me is special because it, like, I, I found it at sort of a dark time in my life. Yeah. Um, and I was struggling with anxiety and depression, which is still going on. Mm -hmm. But it um, was able to, like, inspire me. Yeah. Like, it's a weird thing to say because, you know, it's not real. Sure. But, like, I could see this guy struggling through these terrible things, far worse than anything I was going through. I was like, well, if he can keep going, I can keep going. I mean, that is the power of story. That's We've been doing that for 100,000 years around campfires, you yeah. know? Uh, or not a hundred thousand years, a long time. Yeah, but I mean, it's mythology. It's you know, it's what the gods do. It's what you know. It, it's it's story is so important. I mean, think about like anything in your life. Kind kind of comes like advertising, like it's servicing a story. You're telling a story to sell a product. You know, 
or to inspire people or both or whatever. But, I mean, it's my favorite thing about what we do at Blind Wave is it's getting to experience lots of stories from all around the world, you know? Sure. Yeah. In English voices. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that, that's that's tough, but – he got a lot of – I saw nothing but love for the guy. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's crazy because it's dark and crazy as the story that even that I know of. Mm-hmm. Like, there's still, like, a lot of love for the stories and everything he did, even yeah. though, like, that stuff is so, I mean, so dark and whatnot. Yeah. I'm glad, like, I'm glad he got a lot of love for all the stories he told because mm-hmm. some of those things do some – they can do some crazy stuff. They go yeah. into some crazy themes. They got worse than whatever I saw in the anime and the manga and stuff. So, like, you know, I could see in some other – some other like versions of that where people would be like, "What the hell is this?" You know, and like yeah. upset by it. But instead, I, I like that he was, you know, embraced by it too, and being like, "This is the story sure. I want to tell, and how terrible things can be." But this guy can keep per- persevering. Yeah, because somehow I mean, getting out of crazy things. You no, know, it's definitely a niche. Like it's it's so dark. Yeah, that yeah. It's, it's not gonna sell like a One Piece or a Naruto. No. Yeah, My or Hero something or like something that. like that, where it's much a little lighter, and it, it's easy to see the overcoming there and not focus on some of the dark craziness that happens you know yeah and like you know there are story decisions outside the anime that i won't spoil for you guys but yeah. like you know he's not afraid to make to play with like your emotions for a character mm-hmm. yeah and i mean like it's the i think i th- i think i've seen that's been talked about the least was just such an incredible artist yeah you know like uh Sometimes when I'm looking at comics or even manga, you can tell, like, this guy's not on model, (laughs) you know? Like, this one was more style, but he has both style and all the characters are consistent. Even, you know, giant tentacle monsters, they're consistent from page to page. And that's always been something that not necessarily bothered me because, you, you know, it can be subjective. But, like, every time I turn a page... I was always shocked by how well the model kept. Well, the detail is crazy, and, like, yeah, his character design, especially with the demons and things, like, yeah. uh, I haven't felt that way since I've seen, like, uh, H.R. Giger's work. Yeah. You know, it's just he had such a, I don't want to say twisted mind, but he could imagine these twisted yeah. creatures. And then a, 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 a new avenue that was open to me by reading the manga is he also just, you know, they, the – the character of Puck is adorable. Yeah. And he gets to draw adorable. And it's like, man, I don't remember this adorableness being in the show. <laughs> uh, That's crazy. It's weird you say Puck and I think of it's exactly what I thought. Yeah. The other show. It. Yep. <laughs> Praise be Puck. <laughs> yeah. Uh well, um it's hard to move on from that just because uh it was so recent. And it's really interesting, too, like, at least for me, because I just started reading the manga, and I, I, you know, Rick has talked about how we got to watch this Berserk, like, before we ever watch Berserk. We're watching this one, not this one. <laughs> and I've always thought, like, I wonder why he doesn't like the one. Like, you know, I don't really understand. Well, this, I don't know, yesterday or two days ago, I was just curious because I got into Berserk mindset. I was just curious. I'm gonna look up 2016 Berserk scene, like, and I kind of looked through some, like some thumbnails, you know, like a so still shot, mm-hmm. and tried to recognize something so I'm not like spoiling myself on something or like let's say, you know. I started watching it and I immediately knew what Rick meant. <laughs> like Berserk for me, I mean, other than let's say Watchmen or, uh, like Berserk for that. Just reading this this first volume has been like man the illustration and the composition and what he chooses to show and not show is very good yeah and you know and it's so ranged too because it's got some of the best action i've ever seen yeah but almost all my favorite panels are quiet moments too. yeah but the illustration 2d illustration is like it's big, biggest strength mm-hmm. and i watched us 30 seconds of that show and i was like i understand why this is not berserk because <laughs> It's 3D modeled. It only gets worse. Bad too. animation, no composition. In the 30 seconds I watched, clang, I'm like, that's clang, clang. like that's ridiculous. <laughs> so 
I immediately understood what he meant. Mm-hmm. But so I, I like I finished the show very recently. I've read the first volume super recently. I watched that thirty seconds recently. There was this hoax that came out. I don't know if you saw this on Twitter about Netflix creating a short film, Berserk. No. That yeah. like blew up and Berserk was trending. Really? Because of it. But then, that? but then but then it was like, no, this is fake. Someone just made this up. Huh. And the author dies like all in like five days for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sure. Like it was a very strange like time for Berserk. That's crazy. But yeah, I don't know if you guys saw there was some type of like a uh, poster that somebody made. And the guy admittedly, I think in the poster or in the post that he did, it was like, This is fake. I'm just playing, but then you know what the in the internet does is they sure. crop well, and they remember move. the uh April Fool's Legend of Zelda like trailer that someone made, and then yeah. people were being like, "Oh my God, no, this is really coming!" Yeah, like I remember people telling me about like because it was April Fool's joke. True, yeah. But it was all, they spent it was so good though for an April Fool's joke that people yeah. were believing that it was real. But it's just, it's insane that it all happened then, and as you said, like we only just now learned about his passing. So if he when you when did you say he passed away on the sixth? Uh, the sixth. So I mean that that poster and hoax and us finishing, he was he had already passed. Yeah. By yeah. that point, you know, it's crazy. Universe works in weird ways sometimes. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah.